Some machines are remembered for changing an industry, when others are remembered for what they could have been. The Oliver OC-18 falls into that second category, a crawler tractor that had everything going for it except timing and corporate commitment. Between 1951 and 1959, only about 800 of these beasts rolled off the production line in Cleveland, Ohio. That's a pretty small number for a machine that sat between Caterpillar's D7 and D8 in size and capability. The OC-18 was Oliver's biggest and most powerful tracked tractor ever built, a 16-ton workhorse packing 161 flywheel horsepower. Yet despite its impressive specifications and innovative features, the machine became a casualty of corporate indifference. This is the story of how a giant was left to fade away, not because it wasn't good enough, but because no one invested in keeping it competitive. The roots of the big crawler stretch back decades before Oliver ever entered the crawler business. In 1916, Rollin H. White founded the Cleveland Motor Plow Company with $6 million in capital. White wasn't new to manufacturing. He was already a founder of the famous White Motor Company. Working at his brother's pineapple plantation in Hawaii starting in 1914, Rollin spent months developing a crawler tractor. By January 1916, his design was complete. The firm renamed itself the Cleveland Tractor Company in 1917 and soon became known simply as Cleetrack, a catchy abbreviation that stuck in the minds of farmers and contractors alike. Cleetrack quickly established itself as a pioneer in the crawler industry. The organization was actually the first to produce a high-drive track-type tractor on a production basis. Their Model F, built from 1920 to 1922, featured an elevated sprocket design that wouldn't appear on a Caterpillar machine until the D-10 emerged in 1977, 57 years later. What truly set Cleetrack machines apart was their reliability, particularly in the final drives. Most track tractors of that era suffered from impact shocks that traveled through the undercarriage and into the drivetrain, causing premature wear. Cleetrack's engineers solved this through an ingenious dead shaft mounting system. The track frames connected to the chassis through this dead shaft, rather than directly to the final drives. All the jolts from rough terrain were absorbed before reaching critical drivetrain components. The design also provided higher ground clearance, making Cleetrack crawlers especially popular with logging and forestry contractors who regularly needed to pass over stumps and brush. Other manufacturers took decades to replicate this approach. Euclid didn't successfully adopt a similar system until the mid-1950s. Cleetrack also pioneered differential steering. While every other American crawler manufacturer relied on steering clutches and brakes, the brand used a controlled differential mechanism they called True Traction. This allowed for smoother, more precise steering without the jerky motions and excessive wear that traditional systems produced. Remarkably, it wasn't until the 1990s that other manufacturers widely adopted differential steering. By World War II, Cleetrack found itself in a difficult position. Unlike most tractor manufacturers, the Cleveland operation didn't receive large wartime contracts. The enterprise had developed a high-speed tractor for hauling artillery, but profit margins on defense work were thin. Combined with research costs for new products, finances grew strained. Meanwhile, the Oliver Farm Equipment Company was looking to expand. Formed in 1929 through the merger of Oliver Chilled Plow Works, Hart Par Tractor Company, Nichols and & Shepard, and the American Seeding Machine Company, Oliver had built itself into a major force in agricultural equipment from its Chicago headquarters. In 1944, the acquisition went through. Oliver invested $3.5 million to modernize the aging Cleveland plant. For a time, the crawlers were marketed as Oliver Cleetrack machines. By 1949, however, Oliver restructured the model numbering system entirely. The Cleetrack name was dropped and a new identification system using the prefix OC for Oliver Cleetrack was applied across the entire tracked tractor lineup. The machine that would become the OC-18 started life in 1945 as the Cleetrack Model FDE. 
Oliver's engineers extensively redesigned it, and the improved version emerged in 1951, wearing its new designation. It measured 14 feet long, stood nearly 7 feet tall, and stretched over 8 feet wide. Power came from a Hercules diesel engine, a six-cylinder inline unit displacing 14.7 liters. This naturally aspirated power plant produced 161 horsepower. That engine connected to a four-forward, two-reverse-speed manual transmission through a 15-inch double-plate over-center clutch. Top speed reached 5.5 miles per hour. The undercarriage featured 78-inch gauge tracks with 35 section links. Six bottom rollers and two carrier rollers per side supported the machine, while standard 26-inch single grouser shoes provided traction. True to its Kleetrak heritage, the track frames were isolated from the final drives through the dead shaft mounting system. Combined with multi-leaf equalizer springs, this allowed the tracks to oscillate plus or minus 13 inches over rough terrain. Climbing onto an OC-18 presented operators with a distinctive sightline. The machine's long front hood stretched out ahead, housing the 66-gallon diesel fuel tank in its rear section. Oliver fitted their larger crawlers with a distinctive opposed Chevron design radiator guard that made them instantly recognizable. Looking forward, operators faced a lengthy view over that untapered hood. But looking backward toward trailed equipment, visibility was excellent since no fuel tank obstructed the rear view. A deeply padded seat helped absorb vibrations during long working hours. Full instrumentation appeared on a semi-circular instrument panel centered in the dashboard. Most notably, the 18 featured air-boosted steering levers, an unusual refinement for a track-type tractor of that era. An engine-driven air compressor provided constant pressure to the system, significantly reducing the effort needed to steer. Combined with the inherent smoothness of Kleetrak's differential steering design, this made the OC18 notably less fatiguing to operate than competitors. Oliver didn't make its own attachments. The manufacturer relied entirely on outside suppliers to provide bulldozer blades, rippers, cable controls, and other equipment needed to put the OC-18 to work. Principal suppliers included Heil, Isaacson, Buckeye, and Carco. Heil was the most predominant, providing hydraulic blades that transformed the bare tractor into a working dozer. This outsourcing approach had advantages and disadvantages. Contractors could choose from multiple blade and ripper options, but it also meant Oliver couldn't offer the integrated packages that Caterpillar provided, where everything came from the same manufacturer with matched specifications and single-source support. Despite producing capable machines, Oliver made a strategic decision that would ultimately doom its crawler line. The corporation simply didn't invest significant research and development money into tracked tractors. The OC models emerged from proven Kleetrak designs, updated and improved, but not fundamentally reimagined. While this approach worked in the early 1950s, competing manufacturers, particularly Caterpillar, were pouring resources into new technologies, improved engines and more efficient transmissions. Oliver was, as one historian put it, resting on its laurels. And while they rested, competitors surged ahead. Sales declined as the existing machines were increasingly surpassed by better technology. By the late 1950s, the writing was on the wall. The last OC-18 rolled off the line in 1959, ending an eight-year production run with only about 800 units built, a fraction of what competitors produced in similar size classes. The final chapter came in 1960, when White Motor Corporation acquired Oliver as a wholly owned subsidiary. In a twist of irony, White was founded by members of the same White family that had started Kleetrak back in 1916. The crawler business had, in a sense, come home. But home wasn't a welcoming place. White showed no more enthusiasm for investing in crawler development than Oliver had. The new parent was equally reluctant to spend the substantial sums required to update the aging tracked tractor range. The decision came in 1965. Production of all Oliver track-type tractors was discontinued. 
White preferred to concentrate Oliver's resources on agricultural wheel tractors. Crawler production moved briefly to Charles City, Iowa, before ending entirely. The plant in Cleveland that had produced Cleetrack and Oliver crawlers for decades fell silent. With it went nearly 50 years of tracked tractor heritage. Looking back, the OC-18 represents both achievement and missed opportunity. Technically, it was a sound machine. The differential steering that wouldn't become industry standard for another four decades was already there. The isolated track frame design that protected final drives was proven. The air-assisted steering levers showed attention to operator comfort that many competitors ignored. With only around 800 units produced, surviving 18s are rare today. They've become sought-after machines among collectors who appreciate their historical significance. The big machine reminds us that building a good product isn't always enough. Markets reward continued investment. When Oliver chose to let its crawler line stagnate, it effectively surrendered the field to hungrier competitors. The Oliver OC-18 was the biggest crawler tractor Oliver ever produced, and in many ways, it was among the most advanced of its generation. But not many cared. Innovation without investment eventually becomes obsolescence. And that's exactly what happened to the OC series when neither Oliver nor White would commit the resources needed to keep these machines competitive. Today, the few surviving units stand as monuments to a road not taken, powerful evidence of what the manufacturer could have achieved if it had chosen to fight for its place in the crawler market instead of walking away.